So, okay, so what we'll do here is we'll have a look at how we break down the anatomy uh, of, of the shoulder. First thing you want to do when you're looking to palpate or needle the shoulder is identify where the spine of the scapula is. So if you find that structure, what you can do then is find 10, 11 different muscles from that structure. So here, what we want to do, locate the spine of the scapula. The key thing here is not just to palpate it, it's to get your fingers either side so you can feel the whole structure running from the medial border right over here to the acromion where it changes angle here. So if we look at this structure and we start from the spine of the scapula, just at the spine and slightly above, you've got a rhomboid minor, which is running over here to C7-T1. Underneath that, from uh, T2 down to about T5, you've got rhomboid major, okay? and that's just from the spine, identifying in line with that and just below it. If you come above rhomboid minor, going from the superior medial aspect of the scapula, which is just above the spine of the scapula, coming up to this point here, you've got levator scapulae, and this is running from here, and it's running to the transverse processes of C1 to 4 in here. So it's actually traveling quite deep right the way over to here. If we go above the spine of the scapula, you've got supraspinatus running across here laterally underneath the acromion. Underneath the spine of the scapula, you've got infraspinatus coming across here as well. And then just underneath that, you've got teres minor running across there and attaching just below infraspinatus, but the attachments are fairly blended together. Beneath that, on the lateral border, you've got teres major. The teres major then is running from here on the lateral aspect, but a little bit of the posterior aspect of the scapula, and then that's running to the anterior aspect of the humerus. So that's disappearing quite, uh, quite quickly there and running underneath, and responsible for partly of that internal rotation that you're getting from pec major as well. And if you think of where that's attaching, you've got pec major, then you've got lap dorsi, and then you've got um, teres major attaching medial to that as well, all influencing that uh, medial rotation. Again, if we still look at the scapula here, from the, the lateral third of the spine of the scapula, you've got deltoid, it's a posterior aspect of the deltoid. You can identify that because the fibers are running in this direction. So if we come up from the axilla, the first muscle bulk that you, um, you palpate here will be the posterior deltoid. So that we've got posterior deltoid there. If we run to the edge of the spine of the scapula, you've got the acromion. And so you've got the um, mid fibers of deltoid here as well. If you come to the top of the spine of the scapula, you've got upper fibers of trapezius coming off here as well. And if you come again to the lower line of the spine of the scapula, you've got the, um, the uh, mid and lower fibers of trapezius. So we've got the upper here, mid here, and then lower coming from the spine of the scapula. So if we look as well at the spine of the scapula, you've got um, trapezius fibers coming uh, medially from here. You've got the posterior deltoid fibers running laterally. And then in between there, you can actually get to infraspinatus where it's exposed. So that's how you would locate the majority of the muscles around the shoulder just from the spine of the scapula.